In this video, we're going to look at three different ways to add titles and graphics to your videos with the Blackmagic A10 Mini. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you're already familiar with this little incredible device. It's an extremely affordable 4 input HDMI switcher and it is packed full of features. If you haven't seen this yet, I'm going to leave a link to my other video down below where I talk about my three favorite things about the switcher and why you should absolutely get one right now. So today I want to talk about three different ways you can make your live streams so much better by adding titles and graphics to your streams. Okay, first of all, if you are streaming using a computer, then you can just use the free app OBS, which can use the A10 Mini as a video input, and you can push that video from OBS directly to YouTube or Twitch. OBS is a fantastic app, and I am not going to go into all the details of the features in this video because there's just a ton, but it also lets you do things like create scenes, easily switch between different graphics overlays. You can even use like a web browser as an input. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it if you are using a computer as your live streaming encoder. You can create lower thirds within OBS. You can load full screen graphics from image files. And this is a super flexible option, but it's actually not my favorite for a few reasons. It means you are stuck using a computer for the streaming. There are much better options for that, such as using a dedicated streaming encoder device. And that means you don't have to bog down your computer doing that encoding. And probably it's also quieter since your computer fan is going to come on. Another downside is that your only copy of your main program out, the video that you're feeding to the live stream, lives only in your computer, which means you're trusting your computer to not crash. But also, it's kind of awkward to switch between controlling OBS and also controlling the A10 Mini, especially if you're just running a stream by yourself. This is not my favorite option, so I'm not going to go into the details of how to do it this way. It also isn't actually specific to the A10 Mini, so you can just go look up any tutorial on adding graphics in OBS and you will find plenty of those tutorials if you're interested. So instead, let's focus on the other two ways that I actually would recommend adding graphics to the A10 Mini. So the A10 Mini has a built-in media pool. This is something that you don't get on any of the other similarly priced switchers. Wait, what am I talking about? There are no similarly priced switchers with the same level of features as this A10 Mini. Yeah, so... It's actually kind of incredible that this thing can store 20 full frame images in internal memory and then you can switch to them like they were a camera angle. Or you can use them as overlays on top of your video as well. The trick to enabling this feature in the A10 Mini is that you need to use the software control app on a computer. That app unlocks a huge set of features that you don't get from just the buttons on the top. I have a separate video that goes over a whole bunch of the pro features of the A10 Mini so I will link to that below as well. So, you need to get the software control app installed and talking to the A10 Mini. And I will admit that this is not the most obvious thing if you just go look at the Blackmagic website, so let's walk through that really quick. It took me a while to figure this out and I swear I have to relearn it every time. So, first go to blackmagicdesign.com, click on the support tab at the top, then click on A10 Live Production Switchers. Now it's going to look like nothing happened yet because the content is actually loaded down below the page here, and I think somebody should tell them about this, I swear it confuses me every time. So if you scroll down after you click that, it then shows you information about just the ATEM switchers and not the rest of their products. So look for the first one in this left column here that is called ATEM switchers update. That's the one you want to download. You can skip the rest of it. You're going to get this pop up, skip registering here. You've probably done that already. Click the download only option in the corner. It's a pretty big download. It's like a couple of gigs, so it might take a while. This is actually the same app that is used for every ATEM switcher they sell, everything from the cheap mini to the $10,000 8K switcher. Okay, once you've got that installed, make sure you've plugged the ATEM mini into your computer over USB or configured it on your network. Either way is totally fine. Now you're ready to start using the graphics features. So this middle tab media is where you can load up graphics into the switcher. Let's talk about a few different ways you can use this. The simplest way to use the media pool is to load up full screen graphics for your intro and outro and your break screens. Take any 1920 by 1080 image and you can drag it into one of the slots here. Then you can drag the image from this slot into the active media player and it becomes a camera angle you can switch to with the still button on the switcher. This is a good start, but in reality, you're not going to want to go into your computer to switch the graphics all the time. I definitely recommend using macros in the ATEM to give yourself buttons you can actually press that will switch the image in the media and cut to that media all with one button press. You can assign these macros to physical buttons on something like the Stream Deck, which makes it super easy to switch between your different still images when you're in the middle of a live stream. My last video about the A10 Mini Pro features walks through that whole thing, how to get that all set up. So again, click the link below to go watch that video if you want to see exactly how to create those macros that will let you do this. Okay, let's talk about lower thirds and other overlays. Loading up full screen graphics is great and all, 
But what's really amazing is that you can also load in images with transparency into the media pool, which means you can create lower thirds or corner bugs. And if you create a transparent ping and load it up, it will actually overlay perfectly onto the video with the transparency and everything. So you can go into Photoshop or whatever image editor you like, create a lower third that's as fancy as you want, export it as a ping, and then drag it into your media pool. If you're in Photoshop, then you can actually use the plugin that ATEM ships to push graphics directly from Photoshop into the switcher. It's a really cool feature. So let's go ahead and do this really quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna just here quickly make a lower third graphic, nothing fancy, I'm not a designer. We'll have a little rectangle here, we'll put some text with my name in it, maybe another color down on this bottom bit. Oh, and then let's do this little gradient fade out on the side so that we can make sure it's actually handling transparency correctly. So once you've got this template created for your program, you can actually now go and you know quickly change the text here to other names of your other presenters, maybe export a whole batch of them into the media pool. So let's go ahead and export this into the switcher either from Photoshop directly or you can export the graphic as a ping and then drag and drop it into a slot into your software control app. So now that it's in the media pool, you can drag it into the player, but this time we don't want to use it as a camera angle because we don't want it to be the full screen, right? We want to have this appear on top of some other camera. And that is what the downstream key section is for. So let's walk through how to set this up step by step. We're going to walk through poking all the buttons in this interface, but in reality, you're probably going to want to do this in a macro so that you can quickly toggle this on and off and switch to other graphics as well. So first of all, Make sure your program out shows the camera angle that you want to see. Then go into the downstream key tab and choose media player one as the fill source. That should also automatically choose media one player key as the key source. So now when you enable this effect, you're going to see that it overlays the lower third on top of whatever camera angle is active. So go ahead and press the on air button under this DSK one section in the app and you will see your title overlaid on top of the video. You can also press the auto button to fade it in over a second or whatever you have configured as your duration here. So I am kind of sad that there are no buttons on the ATEM Mini itself that will let you do this. The picture in picture and the key buttons are for the upstream keyer and these buttons are not reprogrammable yet. Just gonna mention this again in case Blackmagic is listening, I would really love to be able to reassign these buttons to be able to run macros since I am really not gonna use most of these buttons most of the time during productions. Okay, so now that you see how to create graphics, you'll probably wanna go create macros that will load the right graphic and set the downstream keyer and all that. You can even make a macro that shows the lower third for three seconds and then fades it out automatically with just one button press. Again, go watch my other video where I walk through this step-by-step -step of how to create that. So you may have noticed that the limitation here is that you can only use still images. The ATM Mini doesn't have an option to load up animations. So that means you can only do static graphics as your titles and lower thirds. That brings us to the third option. This is definitely a bit more involved, but it can get you a really great end result. That is to use an external program to generate the graphics and bring them in as one of the HDMI inputs. There's a really fantastic free app called H2R Graphics, which is designed specially for doing lower thirds or tickers in live streams. I will leave a link in the description to where you can go download that and some other good tutorials on how to set it up and use it. But I will give you a quick idea here of how you can use this with the ATEM Mini. So first things first, you're going to want to use a dedicated computer for this since you're going to be plugging the computer's HDMI out into the Mini and you don't want to risk messing up the graphics as you're using the software control app or anything else. So once you got the app downloaded and up and running, you get a few options along the top. For now, we're only going to look at the lower thirds option to start. And this is where you can preload a list of lower third titles that you want to use during the program. So go ahead here and add a few to the list. And when you're ready, click this chroma option on the top. This is going to open up a new window that you can drag around on your laptop. And that's where the graphics are going to be displayed. So if you press the show button, you will see your lower third appear for a few seconds and then fade out. So you'll want to drag this onto your second monitor, which is actually, you know, the ATEM Mini, and then make it full screen there. So on your ATEM Mini, you should be seeing a full screen green, and when you click show, you'll see the title appear on top of the green background. So now you're ready to go into the ATEM Mini and green screen this out. So go into the upstream key tab here on the side, and under fill source, make sure that it has the input that you've plugged your laptop into. So here I've got my laptop plugged into input four, so I'm going to select that as the fill source. And again, make sure your main camera is set as the program source right now. This chroma sample feature is super handy because it lets you kind of just eye drop the green color right from the video instead of having to guess it. So click this chroma sample and then drag this little box to the corner. It'll pick up the green that your laptop is sending. And because you've got a perfectly flat green here, you shouldn't need to worry about any of the other knobs and dials down in the section here that talk about how to tweak the green screen. 
This is more useful if you're green screening from a camera input where you may not have perfectly lit your background and you have a couple different shades of green and you need to you know, make sure that you're green screening all of the different greens out. Okay, so if you're ready to go try this out, make sure your camera is the active input and then press the on air button under next transition. Since your computer isn't actually displaying a title, it's just green, you should see nothing change. So now click show on H2R graphics and your lower third should fade in and out. So this should give you a quick idea of how to set up H2R graphics. Now you should be able to go play around with the rest of the tabs and see the other things that it has, like the ticker feature. The only downside to this approach is that you have now used up your keyer for the graphics. So you can overlay graphics on top of yourself, but you can't also then green screen yourself out of a background. So if you want to sit in front of a green screen and then have yourself appear on top of a video, you can still add graphics on top. It just has to happen via the media player, not from an external input. So this is my two favorite ways of adding graphics and titles using the A10 Mini. I hope this gives you some ideas of how to do this on your own live streams. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up. It helps more than you might realize. And I will see you in the next one.